All right, I interrupt this broadcast to bring you a couple tools. In order to create this X-Wing, we need to know a few things, okay? So let's go into polygons, make a box. Let me go over something. The first thing we need to go over is one of the tools. And that is the insert edge loop tool. The one thing we got to learn throughout this whole entire lesson is triangles are bad. Okay? In order to counteract triangles, we use the insert edge loop tool. Okay? It inserts a loop all the way around naturally. Okay? There is also a tool called the split polygon tool. Do not use this yet. Okay? This will yield triangles because I have no control, well I have too much control over where I place my edges. Okay, So let's only use the insert edge loop tool for this exercise. The other tool is inserting an edge on a face. Okay, and When I say that is right now I have extrude, then I go like this So now when I go to insert an edge loop in this area, it will not let me. See? It inserts an edge on the face. The only time it's going to insert an edge on the other faces is when I go like this. Okay. Now, another thing you have to learn is the fact that things need to be braced and not braced with unorganic geometry. Okay. We'll go over that. Take this for example. If I want to extrude a face on the very top of this device in face mode, I want like this and then go over to scale then extrude it and then pull the blue arrow up this form, uh, when you hit three on the keyboard, will collapse. Okay. Now, if you brace it using insert edge loop tool, let's say I put an edge here, 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 and here. So all the way around the outside edges. And I hit three, I get this. And if I put one more here and here, I get this. No loss of detail. And the form stayed true. I get this nice rounded edge. And what this allows me to see is what happens when I do the next level. Okay. What happens when I go to smooth this? Well, I get that shape. And I do not have to have one on the keyboard anymore. Or three on the keyboard anymore. I can keep it on. Keep that off. So that smoothing right there, that was rounded edges. Don't those look nice? Yeah. The problem is it yields a lot of geometry. Okay, so this does this workflow does require a little bit of poly reduction in the end. But if you know how to brace an object, you can produce all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, take for instance, my shelf exploded. Oh, there we go. Take for example this. Let's say I didn't want everything to be hard edge. Well. Let's look at the box. You know, if we go into three on the keyboard, what happens is it collapses. Okay. If you insert an edge loop going all the way around the first form, and you're going to hear me talk about forms all the time. Forms are when two shapes meet. 
Okay, so this one is braced, and what happens is I hit three on the keyboard, does this. Now, what happens if I want a round surface coming off of this? Well, I can do that. I can extrude, and I pull this up, and I hit three on the keyboard, and voila, I have a box with a bump. What if I need it introverted? So I extrude, scale in a little bit, and then push it down. There we go. You got a box of the bump. And as long as you can keep that concept in the back of your head of when you brace a form and you smooth it. Uh, what happens is only one half of the form comes out. So we're always aiming for the smooth. And this is called a workflow. So what happens is this is my workflow, not necessarily everybody's workflow. Uh, everybody's got their own workflow. But um, you're going to find out that it might be very easy for you to learn. And then what happens, you adapt it into your own workflow later on when you make one. All right, so this ends the interruption of this broadcast. Please go back to what you were doing and meet me in the next video.